Okay, so hi, welcome to this session on sketch noting for beginners um, as part of the offering we've been putting out uh, over the last few weeks um, around how to use technology in the classroom, specifically um, because of my role from a, an iPad point of view. Um, but lots of things that we've talked about over the last few sessions could easily be adapted depending on the technology that you have at hand. Uh, like I said, today's session is on sketch noting. Um, again, not necessarily device specific. I'm going to be going through how I do this on an iPad, and there are some benefits to doing this mobile technology wise, but this is also something you can do on a piece of paper if you've got lots of different coloring pens available to you. Um, if you haven't met me before, my name is Matt Pullen. I am senior lecturer at the University of South Wales. I'm also an Apple professional learning specialist, which is a role where I get to go into schools and work with leaders, staff, etc., teach in the classroom to show all different ways that you can use technology in the classroom. Uh, with today being on sketch noting, I thought I'd change my little Memoji to a drawing rather than um, an actual picture of me. Uh, and we'll talk about how you can do this really easily. I'm not that good an artist, by the way. That is just a trace. So. Um, let's get going. For this session, we're going to be using um, a few different apps. I might not actually go into all of the apps and use them, but these are just apps that, that I use quite regularly um, to do different things. Um, Keynote, which is my go-to app for most things, to be honest, because it, it allows so much functionality. Uh, notes that you can use to do things. Uh, Paper 53 was probably the first app that I ever started using to do um, sketch noting. Um, it's a free drawing app, basically, and can be used for lots of other things. Sketch Your School, very, very similar in that respect. It's an app which you can use to draw, and it has different options in it. Um, and I'm going to look at photos because the one thing that I found when I first started doing sketch noting was I'm not a great artist, um, and we'll talk about the, the idea of art and sketch noting as being two separate things. But if you are using the same sort of pictures all the time, there are a couple of cheats that you can do, which means you don't have to draw every time. You can utilize um, the split screen function that we've talked about in previous sessions to drag and drop images that you've already created. So we're gonna have a look at some cheat ways that you can do this. Um, and we're also gonna talk about like what sketchnoting is and why it would be useful. Um, so let's sort of go into that. From my university point of view, I like to put a bit of, uh, you know, theory behind some of the things. Um, and this is a great quote that that captures like what sketch noting is all about. Uh, and it really it's that combination of the text and the visuals to represent what you've learnt. And we'll talk about this in terms of some theory in a second as to why this is a really, really useful thing for you to do as educators, but also something that you could introduce to your children in the classroom, regardless of age, as a way of them being able to share their thinking um, because it's all about processing rather than just copying. So what is sketchnoting? So sketchnoting, like we said, is a visual representation of words. That doesn't mean it necessarily is always pictures because it could still be words, but it's how you present those words. So the different typography that you might use, the, you know, the, the shape of the text that you use, it's lots and lots of different ways that you can do things. It supports this thing called dual coding theory. I'm not gonna go into a full on lecture about what dual coding is. The, the very basics of it are, if we utilize more than one stream of information to go into our head, we have more places to recall that information later. Um, so for example, dual coding is a mix of, in sketch noting, the linguistic, the language element, and the visual representation. And because I've got those two places, that I can find that information later, I've got twice as much chance, you, you would assume, of, of being able to recall that information. Also links a lot to this idea of picture superiority effect. And if you've ever taught young learners, and we're talking preschool, um, nursery, reception, everything that they do is through visual because at that point they haven't learned the language skills. So we will show them pictures of an apple to get them to understand the word apple, and then you'll link it to the word so that they can then make that connection. Well, that doesn't change as we get older. That, that's how we learn, okay? We we show that that's how we learn when we're young. Um, and then for some reason, we, we move away from it and we just go to text-based because 
I don't know, for some reason we think because we've mastered that skill, well, that's that's how we'll continue. But actually what the picture superiority effect highlights is that if you link pictures to the words, you have a much better chance of retrieval of that information later on. And this is why people do things like mind maps, um, you know, for that exact reason, it's that visual representation of information because it represents how your brain works. Okay? So again, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not going to go into all of that detail about the whys and the hows, etc. cetera. Um, if you're interested in it, there, there are some good theories to kind of have a look at if you want to, to do some further research. Um, I did do my master's on this recently, so I could go into a full on three hour seminar on it i'm really not i'm going to keep this light and just say that they are the reasons behind why we do what we do so briefly then let's let's have a look at this dual coding theory so pavio pavio i don't even know how to say his name that's how much i'm i'm into the the theory side of these things he came up with this concept of dual coding and the idea is if we just take the word bus then we just recall the word bus if we turn that word into an image then we've actually had to process the word in our brains, which means there's more chance of us being able to understand what it means. Words could be meaningless. And my example of this I'll give you is, is my son is a, is a fantastic reader, right? He, he loves reading and he can say lots and lots of words, but he doesn't necessarily know what they all mean. So he'll be reading a book and, and it sounds fantastic, but then he doesn't always show us that he understands what that word meant. So in this concept, he understands the word and the word has gone into his head and he can recall that word, but he hasn't made any link to the meaning. Now, by adding a picture to it means he's had to process that word. And that, that's as simple as it needs to be at this point. If we move on to the picture superiority effect, this, this came sort of later on. So Andre um, in 2010 gave this idea that if you draw the picture of the car or you see the picture of the car, you have a 29% more chance of being able to recall that information later. So if you think about children that are going through anything where you're asking them to retrieve the information at a later date, by simply asking them to draw the pictures of the things that they're talking about, to represent it in a way that makes sense to them, probably will show a, a, a much higher chance that they'll re remember this as they go down. So sketching in books, um, we talk about this quite a lot in terms of children that doodle. Doodling actually has got this really bad connotation. What I found in my master's was that doodling is, is really thought of as a negative thing, like if people sit and doodle, it's because they're not paying attention. When actually, if you doodle productively, there's a better chance that you'll remember the, the bits of information that you've looked at. So again, I'm not, I'm not going to go into huge detail on this. This isn't a lecture. This is just, um, a, you know, what is sketchnoting and... I thought it'd be useful to give a little bit of the background to what and, and why you would do sketchnoting as adults, but also with children. So let's have a look at how you would get started with this. I, I've created a book actually about this, which is, is free to download, and, and I can pinpoint this to, to people later on, about the process of sketchnoting. And sketchnoting is, like I said before, it's not about being artistic. Um, now, if you are artistic, you can be great with your sketch notes, right? But when I first started sketchnoting myself, which was about five, six years ago, I, I saw it at a conference I was at, the person who I saw was a fantastic artist. And I thought, oh, that's amazing. I wish I could do that. Um, and it wasn't until I almost mentioned that to him that he turned around and said, well, you can. I'm just, I, I've just got an art background, so my pictures look better. And then he started to explain just some of the basics to me. Um, so my, my sketch notes aren't fantastically artistic. And the key thing is much as my personal notes, if I was just handwriting notes, they're for me, they're not really for anybody else. Sometimes I'll share them because, you know, it's quite nice to, to share out what you, what you've learned about something, but realistically the same as personal note taking in word form, they're for me to use. So some of the basics then to look at the layout of what you're doing, the design. So what colors you might do. Do you want it to be cartoony or do you want it to be more real life and structured? The colors that you use. And that's a really, really useful way for you to remember things. And, and some of these are the reason why digital sketchnoting will trump um, sketchnoting on a piece of paper with pens. Digitally, I don't have to have a pencil case full of colors or, or types of coloring pens or pencils or crayons. I have them on my device because it's kind of built into the applications I use. 
Do we use shapes to represent things, to, to go around things, etc., uh, to link things together? And then icons, you know, do we use arrows to, to show the direction of our thinking, etc.? So I'm actually going to just jump straight in to some sketch noting. Um, I'm, I'm in Keynote at the moment, so I'm going to start a new page. Um, and if you want to play along with this, feel free. And if you do create something, you know, share it with me on Twitter. I'd love to see the things that people create. So I'm just going to delete what's on the page. And I'm just going to make a start here. Now, like I said, I'm not an artist, so bear with me. So the reason I said digitally that there's a benefit here. I'm in Keynote at the moment. I'll go through those steps again. I've got a blank slide on my page. If I tap the plus at the top and then tap on drawing, I get these drawing tools along the bottom. I have a pen tool that I can change the thickness of just by choosing the different thicknesses. A pencil, again, tap on it again, you can change the thickness. A crayon, tap it again, change the thickness. A fill tool, so you can just instantly you know, fill in your colors, etc an eraser. Uh, this is for moving things, which is really, really handy when it comes to sketch noting, because you don't know, if you were sketch noting this session, you don't know where I'm going next with this, right? So you might fill your page, and then I carry on talking, and you think, oh, I've got to add in an extra uh, an extra element, so I might want to make some space. So that that is a really useful tool. And then finally, you've got your colour tool, which matches to um, the, the tool that you're using. So I'm on the pen at the moment. If I tap on the black, you can see I've got colors that I can use and, and I can, you know, unlimited kind of range of colors that you might want to choose there. Or you can use a color picker and choose any color that you might have available on your screen. So again, that's quite useful. So the first thing I'm just gonna do is just think about, you know, what would my layout be? So if I was gonna do this now on sketch noting, I might say, well, like in the middle of my page, I'm gonna have it, the title of my sketch note. And then I'm gonna, enhance it maybe with some shapes around the outside i quite like the idea of making it look like it's a banner so i've done this really quickly but you get the idea so make it look as if that's that's a banner on the page and then the reason why you have those fill tools is because then you can just quickly tap inside those shapes and color in those bits so that's that's kind of just a, a, a first approach to doing these things, okay? Um, and then I might say, you know, within my sketch note, I've got somebody talking, so I might want to introduce the person. Now, this is where, like I said, you don't need to be artistic at all. So I'm just going to kind of play around with some colours and etc. And we know that the presenter of the session is Matt P. I could put that again as a little banner on the underneath. And and this is really the that's how simple sketch noting is, right? It's just what's happening at the moment and how do I process it? So the next thing that is going to happen, so I'm going to put an arrow, move into the next thing, is Matt's going to talk to us about how we represent uh, words with pictures. So if I was to talk to you now about my journey to uh, to school or my journey to, to work or whatever it might be, my journey was in a car, okay? So I'm going to have to think, all right, well, we're going to need to draw a car there because we're talking about a journey. So you know, I'm going to draw the road. So this represents the road. And then I'm just going to draw you know, a car on the page. And again, it doesn't have to be fantastically artistic. You can sort of get carried away with whatever you want to do. But I'm just starting to represent some of the information. And I know that my car journey takes me about 20 minutes. So to represent that, I'm just going to actually put maybe a stopwatch in there a bit closer because my journey takes me about 20 minutes to get and make it look like there's a stopwatch and then i can move on to that next thing okay so so really that is that's the process right so you're just thinking about like what's happening and what happens next so my journey is to get to my place of work so i might want to draw my place of work i'm trying to think what my place of work would actually look like so i'm going to cut corners here and I'm just going to say uni there we go that's roughly what my university looks like ish and and so on and so forth so so that's the process right for for me I'm just building a journey um, and in this case it is actually you know pictorially my journey to get somewhere by representing things with pictures 
Um, and, you know, it might be that my next thing, well, I can't really think of the journey of what do I do in work. So I'm actually going to represent this um, with just some nice typography. So I, and again, like I am doing this whilst trying to talk as well, which I've realized recently being a, doing webcasts, I'm not that good at talking and drawing at the same time. Right, so here's my point. So I've started to write something, I've run out of space. The lasso tool just enables me to very quickly select that, drag it across, give myself some more space, go back in, and then finish off. So you get the idea, right? So, and, and again, you know, please don't judge my drawing here. It's bizarre as now I talk about this is it's not about art, and then instantly, I'm instantly thinking people are going to be judging how good I can draw. I did actually get a GCSE in art, but that was a fair few years ago. Now. Um, so again, I'm just going to, you know, colour this in, make it look a little bit nicer. He says, hopefully, just by tapping on each of those things. Okay, so that's what I do in university. And so on and so forth. So all I've got is my journey using the arrows to link together the pictures. If I can't think of a picture or I'm I'm sort of pushed for time, I can choose some typography. And then the theory behind this is that that visually will stick in my head more than if I just wrote that down as a series of words. And if I was listening to someone whilst they were talking, and I'm going to go back to this example here. This was a talk that um, one of uh, our fantastic partner schools led to our students. And I sat in on this and I thought I'll, I'll sketch note what uh, Kat was talking about during the time. And this, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is my style. It's not to say this is the right style. This is the style I took. Um, and as she was talking about the new curriculum, she was talking about this igniting the passion for learning. So I thought I'll put a fire around the, the title there. My people are not fantastically detailed. They usually just look like circles with a blob for a body and, and, and eyes, etc. cetera. Um, but then when Kat started talking about her journey, I just thought, okay, I, I want to represent that as, as an actual journey, similar to what I've just done on my sketch note. So they start with the why, um, which was a successful futures. Their discussion was what learners need. I thought, well, we'll do this as a bus, right? So, so the, the bus is how they're all going to travel around this. Um, and then as she was talking, I was adding things that she was discussing about her journey and then thinking about, you know, what do we do at this point? Well, I focus back. So I, made it look like the road was going back so you'd go back to where you'd been before um, the school was a culture of learning so I tried to represent it in that way etc cetera, etc cetera. this is just kind of how I put my things together in terms of a sketch note that the impact it has is that I can almost now remember exactly what she was talking about during that presentation because I've captured it as that image and one image can spark that whole memory as opposed to having to read back through all of my notes which let's face it, if you're anything like me, I can make lots of written notes in, in a session, but the chances of me actually reading them back at a later date are probably slim. So I feel proactive in the session, but I'm not really going to read it back afterwards. The idea of sketch noting is I can just look at a picture and, and it can sort of stimulate my thought process. It can stimulate the links that I've made between different elements. Um, it makes me question why I've done certain things. So instantly I look at this and say, you know, Kat was obviously talking about a journey. Without having to read my notes, I can see that because I've I've shown that as a picture. So quite simple in terms of, you know, that, that layout of things. And and this is kind of, you know, you can see how that, that was starting to build in terms of my my process here. So that's that's the idea behind that. Let's have a look at some of the other apps that you can use with this then. So I talked then about you know the range of apps that you can use. Um, I use Paper 53 quite a bit. Um, I'm going to jump onto my other iPad to show you that one. Sketches School is, is another very, very similar tool to this. Again, free to download and, and free to use. Um, I'm just going to jump into uh, a new book here. I'll start a new page. Now, again, one thing to highlight is you you might have some slight concerns about how good you are at drawing etc so what you can do and you can do this in keynote you can do this in paper 53 as well is actually consider drawing over things so if i come into my um so i'll just go through that again three dots at the top import which is the square with the arrow pointing down and go to photos 
So I'm going to open my photo library and let's go into castles. Um, and let's say I want to have this, you know, I'm, I'm doing a talk about castles or someone's talking to me about castles. If I just tap colors on the right hand side, let's just choose black, I think. No, actually, go there. I've got a set of coloring tools over on the right hand side, uh, left hand side, sorry. So similar to Keynote, but, but a lot more option. You've got lots of different tools here that you can play around with. So pencil and, and paint brushes, et cetera. I'm just gonna use the fine line tool. And I'm very, very roughly going to just trace around the outside of this. And you get the idea. And all I'm doing is just creating a very, very simple outline of a drawing. Now, if I can't draw a castle, and although saying that this castle should be fairly easy to draw anyway, because it's quite uniform in its setup, but you let's see what I mean in a second. Uh, run out of space inside. I'm just going to cut that off just to speed this up. So I link that across, just finish off that edge there. Uh, we know there's a door there, there's a window there, etc. Okay. So you get the idea, you can do this, you can spend a bit more time, but really it's a sketch note, right? So I'm, it's a representation that there's a castle here rather than worrying too much about detail. I'm not trying to say this is art. Um, and then what I would do is tap back um, on where I imported the image. It's now got the X and get rid of the image. And now I've got a picture of a castle that I can color in. Choose a color, uh, so it's probably grayish type color. Oops, choose gray. gray. There we go. So now all of a sudden I've got, I've got that image that I can really, really quickly just use in terms of my uh, sketch noting. Okay, so there's, there's that image that I might want to move to a different place on my screen, etc. Really, really quick and simple way to do that. Now go back into Keynote, you can do exactly the same in here. So if I tap on plus uh, and go to, oops, go to my photos and videos, again, go to those castles, choose that same picture of the castle. It's gonna add that picture to my screen. And this is why I actually prefer Keynote, so I just find it a little bit easier to use. Um, I'm gonna use the fill tool for this to show the speed of being able to do this in Keynote. And I'm just gonna draw, Again, really roughly, just the outline of this castle. And because I've used the fill tool, it's going to instantly fill it in. Um, and it's dropped behind, which enables me to then add in other elements. And I'm actually going to want to choose the colour of some of the brickwork. And I'm just going to put windows in. So again, just tracing over the top really, really quickly. I'm not going to do the whole thing because it's going to take a while. Okay, so now if I just tap on the picture itself and delete the picture, there's my picture of my castle. And I lasso that picture and separate it. So now I've got control of that castle. Okay, so I can make it bigger, make it smaller. And then talking about, like, if that was a regularly used thing, and I appreciate castles probably aren't the most regularly used things that you would use in a sketch note, but just to kind of prove a point, um, and we talked about this um, earlier in, in other sessions. If I open up my photos and I tap on Keynote and drag it up and drop it on half the screen. So I've now got that split screen that we've looked at previously. If I want that drawing to be an image so I can use it over and over again, if I tap and hold it and drag it, you can see I've got control of that picture. I can take it over here and drop it. It now becomes an image. So here it is as an image in my camera roll. And now I can do the, the reverse of that. Tap and hold, drag it back, drop it on the screen. And now I can use that as many times as I like. Now the reason that's really helpful in sketch noting is if I come back to my pictures over here, tap on the plus, go to new album, call it sketch notes, and tap save. I'm not going to add anything at this point, but now all of those little images can just be dropped really quickly into my sketch notes. Similarly, I can take that car. I think oh, I'm probably going to use the car again. Separate that. Tap, hold, drag, drop. 
I've now got a car that I can use as many times as I want. Uh, the stopwatch, again, that might be something that I would use on a regular basis for showing, you know, time. So tap, hold, drag, drop. And now at any point, if I'm starting a new sketch note, if I come out of this, go to a new presentation. So let's imagine I'm doing a new sketch note now. Just go to a blank slide. I go to my sketch note icons here drag them in, I can put that in as many times as I want. So I don't actually have to do the drawing each time. So that's just a real quick shortcut where over on the left-hand side, where in my sketch notes section, they're my shapes that I'm going to use. It could be arrows, could be things that you just want to use really, really quickly. So if you know that you're in um, a, a lecture or a seminar, or I've d I do sketch notes when I watch TV programs sometimes as well, or if I'm reading a book, I'll sketch note about what I'm reading because it just helps me process the things i've even done sketch notes about lectures before um and then i will rather than having lecture notes in front of me i'll have a picture of a journey with little prompts of what i'm going to talk about at each point again just to kind of show that flow of what it is that that i need to cover within my sketch note uh, within my session so that's they're just kind of a, a couple of quick ways to get started with sketch noting right so we're not talking, again, we're not talking um, art here. We're talking about processing of, of information. And I'm not saying it's not about art because I'm not a good artist, by the way. Um, there, there are, That's not a cop-out because I can't draw very well. Um, the process here is actually meant to be all about like what you actually do. So just to reiter reiterate, this is the process for saving to your library. Split screen, create a little, uh, you can see on the right-hand side of that image there, there are lots of little icons that I would potentially regularly use in my sketch notes, so I just drag them across to the side. Last thing to kind of uh, highlight um, whilst we're talking about sketch noting, um, oops, I'm gone on too far, is like, would you do this with learners in the classroom and how would you structure it for them? Now, lots of schools will do things like uh, mind maps, learning maps. Um, uh memory boards um you know processes for for creating storyboards etc it's the same sort of idea um and like i said i am showing you on an ipad i i do think there's a lot of power to doing this on ipads etc but please do also see that there's an awful lot of relevance of doing this just on a piece of paper with pens as well there are some um, huge advantages as, as i've shown you before with having the, the drawing tools down the bottom i've now got an unlimited supply of drawing colors, pens, etc., cetera, um, which can save processes quite a lot. But um, equally, if you've got access in the classroom, then um, lots of children can do this with just a piece of paper and, and any pens that they have. So that's really it. Um, just to kind of finish up by saying there are lots and lots of opportunities within Apple Teacher. If you haven't been on Apple Teacher uh, before, there's lots of things that you can do on Apple Teacher to learn more. Um, some really, really useful tools that you can use within Apple Teacher. One of them specifically talks about sketchnoting and how you can sort of build up sketchnotes, etc. Um, and also just to highlight that I have created a book um, and I can email this out to people. I'm just going to jump onto my other device a second quickly. Really talks about the process to get started with sketchnoting. So if you've never done sketchnoting before, this is a book that you can download, which just talks through the process of what to do. Okay, so how to trace objects, um, how to to draw people, and it's just about your style. So you end up with a with a book full of style ideas, typography, like what styles you can do, how you lay out your things, um, and then just practice spaces. Okay, so that that's something you can download. If I just highlight where you can find that, this is free. I'm not sort of pushing products to be able to sell anything. If you go to books on an iOS device um, or on an iPad, so books is is this icon here, the, the orange um, book icon, again, which is free. If you go into there and search for me, uh, you'll see that I've got quite a few books that I've created in the bookstore, and one of them is on Get Sketching. Um, and you can download that. It's not going to cost you any money, um, and that will guide you through the process. And again, I've tried to do it in a really, really simple way, but you could also share this with learners in the classroom. 
uh, just goes through some of the basics that we've talked about here. So uh, just to try to add to, to what we've talked about, there's some additional things there. So just we've just hit 30 minutes. So um, thank you very much for joining in the session today. It's been a real sort of pleasure, if not a very quick uh, run through of what sketchnoting can do and how you can get started with it. If anybody had a go at any sketchnoting, I would absolutely love to see them um, shared. Um, and you can share them with me um, on Twitter um, at Matt6453. I'd love to see what people come up with. Um, but other than that, I'm going to leave the session recording there, but I will stay online and I'll unmute people if you have any questions.